Hey everyone, I'm Katie from Addicted to DIY and today I'm going to be showing you my brand new dust collection system setup using the Rockler Dustrite 1250 CFM dust collector. With the addition of some new and larger power tools this year, I've been on a mission to make my shop layout more efficient. Part of that is setting up a better dust collection system, and I'm partnering with Rockler Woodworking and Hardware to share with you my new setup using the new Dustrite 1250 CFM dust collection system. I'll be honest, I had these crazy ideas of running ducting all over the place to attach to all of my machines, which would have cost a small fortune and really would have been more complicated than I needed. After contacting the folks at Rockler, I found that this idea wasn't necessary at all. I sent them a sketch of how I wanted all of my tools laid out, and then they sent me a list of supplies and accessories that would best suit me. I've linked to everything I used in the description below. Here's how I set it all up. Let's start with the dust collector itself. The wall-mounted Dustrite 1250 CFM dust collector is the latest addition to the Rockler Dustrite lineup. With its 1.5 horsepower motor, it's powerful enough to run your whole shop. The Y adapter inlet allows for multiple hoses to be connected to it to run multiple tools. While I love the idea of mobility with everything, I actually really like that this is wall mounted. For starters, it takes up very little space and it forces me to arrange my tools in a more organized fashion to maximize on space. Yes, I understand that I don't necessarily have a space issue in my shop, but an efficient shop layout is far more productive than tools scattered about all willy nilly. Oh, and did I mention it also comes with a remote? The dust collector comes with a five cubic foot 30 micron bag, which is really great, but I don't currently have any air filters in my shop, so I decided to add the canister filter that fits onto it, which takes the filter rating down from 30 microns to one micron, which is a pretty huge difference. To get started with mounting the dust collector, I located the studs in the wall. The lag bolts need to go into the center of each stud, so I took my time locating all of them to ensure I found the edges first, then marked center. Once I found the center of the studs, I measured from the ground up to mark the height where each lag bolt would attach. For me, that was 66 inches. From each of those marks, I measured down 12 inches for the second set of holes. I used my stud finder again to mark the center of each of the studs then grabbed my level to ensure that all of the marks were in line with each other. I drilled 3 16 inch pilot holes into each of the studs to accept the 5 16 lag bolts that would attach the cleats. With my walls being finished, I needed to mount the dust collector on 2x4 cleats. I had some scrap 2x4s so I cut them to size so that they would be attached to 3 studs in the wall. With the cleats cut to size, I then marked center on each of them. I made the remaining marks 16 inches on center from that middle point to mark the locations for each of the lag bolts to attach to the wall studs. From there, I also marked the location for the lag bolts that the dust collector would hang from. I drilled pilot holes into each of my marks, then followed up with a 1 inch Forstner bit to countersink the lag bolts at each of the studs. I got ahead of myself on instructions, so my original pilot holes were a bit small and I ended up drilling out new holes for the studs at 5 16 inch and then 3 16 inch for the lag bolts that would hold the dust collector. I attached the cleats to the walls with 4 inch by 5 16 inch lag bolts and washers, lining the lag bolts up with the pilot holes I drilled into the wall. For the lag bolts the dust collector mounts to, I drove them partially into the cleats, leaving about one inch out to fit through the keyholes. I placed the vibration dampening shims on the bolts, then we hung the dust collector, and I tightened the lag bolts. With the dust collector in place, I got to work installing the filter. I applied foam tape to the outlet port, and then installed the flange that would hold the canister. To attach the canister, you'll definitely want a second set of hands to hold it in place while you line up the holes and thread the bolts. I'm sure it's possible to do it by yourself, but why work harder if you don't have to?
Once the canister was attached, my husband installed the handle for the agitator and we gave it a few test spins to ensure proper alignment. I added more foam tape to the bottom of the canister, then added the dust bag and the strap clamp, and then called it a day. The next day, I finished setting everything up. I installed the Y fitting and added the blast gates to each port. For the hoses, I chose to go with Rockler's 4 inch expandable hose in 21 and 28 foot lengths. They come in 3 foot and 4 foot long boxes, so pulling them out kind of reminded me of the clown trick with the never ending handkerchief. I attached the hoses to the Y adapter with hose clamps, then started working on where I would mount the docking port for the quick disconnect handle. I once again grabbed my stud finder to mark the location for the backer board I'd be attaching to the wall. I made all of the necessary marks for height and stud location, then attached the board to the wall. With the board in place, I first installed the docking port for the handle, then attached the 28 foot hose to the end. The 21 foot hose will remain constantly attached to my table saw. I turned the dust collector on to contract the hose and determine the location for the hose straps on the backer board. I attached those with the included screws, making sure they were both centered and level. To put the hose handle on the dock, you just turn the dust collector on, dock the handle, then wait for the hose to contract so you can strap it into place. The straps keep the hose under control so it's up and out of the way. I moved on to attaching the 4 inch quick disconnect ports to each of my tools, which will allow me to quickly and easily switch the hose handle between them. With all of the ports attached and the dust collector installed, it was time to put everything back in order. I attached my floor sweep to the quick change handle and cleaned up the corner of my shop, then moved my tools around to get everything set up in its place. I'll be sharing a video on these mobile bases I built very soon, so be on the lookout for that. I finished cleaning all of the sawdust buildup on my tools and honestly just couldn't stop there, so I just kept on cleaning. I'm so happy with the ease of use with the quick connect handle and how easy it is to switch from tools to the floor sweep or bench nozzle. The floor sweep also has a grate which fits inside of it to keep large pieces of cutoffs from making their way into the dust collector. I'm sure at some point I'll also convert this into a two-stage system, but in the meantime, I'm just really enjoying how simple it is to keep my shop clean and connect all of my tools to dust collection. If you'd like to improve your dust collection system, or you just don't even have one yet, make sure you check out the description below for all of the tools and attachments I used for mine. If you have any questions or would like to go over your proposed plan, I highly recommend contacting Rockler's support team. Their experts will guide you through the whole process and help you put together a plan that will work best for your shop and your needs. Special thanks to Rockler Woodworking and Hardware for partnering with me on this project today. For more video tutorials just like this one, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've also queued up a few other videos that I think you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching.